Hello YouTube and welcome, Frick here, and I have a brand new episode for you in my Let's Play Flight Simulator X FS Passengers video series for you. Now, this flight was really long, it was about two and a half hours long, and I didn't want to push out a video that was over two and a half hours long, so what I'm going to do is something new and push this out in three parts. Part one is going to be the checklist up to the takeoff, part two is going to be takeoff and cruise, and part three is going to be a final approach and landing. I hope you enjoy this format, it gives you a little shorter videos, but more frequent of videos. If you don't like it, or if you do like it, it, let me know in my comment section below or message me. Otherwise, please subscribe to my page, like my videos if you like them, and send me the comments because I love hearing from you. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video and enjoy the flight. Thank you for your patience and cooperation. YouTube and welcome Frick here and I have a brand new episode for you know a brand new season for you in my Let's Play Flight Simulator X FS Passengers video series for you. I know that I was gone for a long time and I apologize for that. I said last hiatus that was going to be the end of my hiatuses. Hi, 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 hi. I don't know what the plural is of that word, but it was going to be the last time, and I apologize for that. But as many of you, I am sure, know, once changes start happening in your life, they seem to just keep on piling on and keep on overturning, overturning, whatever. I had a lot of changes in my life, some good, some bad, but regardless, they were changes. But I am now back. And I have found a new fun motivation for making these videos and I hope that it sticks. If you guys want it to stick, one way to help keep me motivated is by liking, commenting, or subscribing to my videos or channel because Honestly, that interactivity between you and I is what gives me the most motivation, especially from your comments. I love hearing from you. Comments and messages, so please send those away to me because I would love to have that interactivity between us. With that being said, you can also see there are some changes happening with this series. Well, at least for this season, that is. As you can see, we're not in a Cessna 172, but or even a Piper Cherokee for that matter, but we are in the Carinado TBM Cicada 850. This is a slightly bigger aircraft, and the reason I am doing that is because I have been listening to your requests. A lot of you have been wanting me to fly bigger aircraft and be flying IFR, so we're going to kind of compromise with you. I'm not going to do Airbuses or 737s or anything like that because there are a lot of channels dedicated to those huge airliners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of transition away from the general aviation aircraft and go into more of the charter level aircraft. Something like this TBM 850 which can hold four passengers or maybe even a Beechcraft C90 or Beechcraft B200 which can hold anywhere you know from like 8 to 13 passengers I want to say between those aircraft. And on top of that, we are going to be doing some IFR flight. So why the TBM 850 Cicada? I'll talk about it a little more in flight, but it is a very good transition aircraft if you are wanting to fly high into class Alpha airspace and if you're wanting to fly IFR. You can do that with the smaller general aviation aircraft, but this aircraft is so simple to fly that if you guys want to transition, this is a great one to learn on. So that's what we're going to go with. We're going to go with this TBM 850. With that, now, I've said with that being said like 12 times already in this video. Anyway, let's go ahead and create a company for us. First, I gotta unhide my menu bar, which keeps on hiding. I don't know why that happens. FS Passengers and create a new company in Pilot. You can see that there's not one created, so we gotta do that. Company name is gonna be Frick Airlines. And if I have a lot of typing messages, it's because my keyboard is on the other side of my throttle quadrant and yoke and everything. So I kind of got to reach over everything to get to it. So, you know, it is what it is. It's going to be sure today is the 7th of February. The year of our Lord 1900 would be way too long ago. We don't have this plane back then. I don't even know if we had biplanes back then. That's before World War One, where a lot of aviation hit changes kind of took place. So we're going to go with 2010. That sounds like a good time. This is going to be founded by me, which is Frick Ofer. And company description, we need a good motto to kind of entice customers, passengers to fly with us, to ride with us. So we're going to make that. We have started a lot of companies. They have either failed or crashed. And that's just basically going to give them a good warm feeling that flying with us is a safe bet. Go ahead and do it. This is going to be great. 
type of letter or type up the three letters uh, for our identifier, which is going to be, again, Papa Hotel Quebec. So we've got Frick Airlines 7 Feb 2010, Frick Fur, a good, good, strong company motto, Papa Hotel Quebec. All right, let's go to next step. We're not going to do a scenario setting. We don't want victory conditions. I don't really know anybody who's really winning at life, except for maybe that guy who a couple of years ago won like the lifetime supply of Domino's pizza. That guy is kind of winning. Custom setting is what we're going to choose. We're going to do economic mode, but we're not going to start super, super rich. But I, 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 I'm debating between $3 million or $30 million. The cicada that we're going to purchase is going to be about $2 million, so we'd have you know, overhead. But the problem is if I want to buy something bigger, I'm not going to have the money. So I think I'm going to go with $30 million, which is a lot of money, but you know, we're, we're just going to have a lot of money so we can keep on crashing and buying new aircraft and people can keep flying with us. Fleet income, we're also going to have that selected. So that way, if we do buy other aircraft, the ones that are sitting stagnant aren't really sitting stagnant, but they're doing mock flights that we don't see, but earning us income. We're not going to be doing career mode because with career mode, you start off as basically the smallest of pilots basically just a private pilot. You can only fly general aviation aircraft like that Cessna 172 or Piper Cherokee. But because of that, we would not be able to fly our TBM Cicada 850. So we're going to keep that unchecked. After all, we've had multiple companies before this and we're, <laughs> I would like to say experienced, but we're not that experienced. I don't know. You guys can be the judge of that. Instant record of flight is going to be on though. So that way, if my pilot dies, if we crash anything, uh, you know, it's going to automatically be logged. It's harder, up and more challenging. Sounds good to me. Fixed failure settings, we're also going to have those. Easy to hard, which is the hardest of them allowable. And it's going to be a 5% chance, chance of failure, which is the default. So let's hit that. Let's get goosebumps from this epic music. Just take a breath and listen to it. <gasps> oh, okay, that's enough of that. Close, and we need to create a new pilot. This pilot name is going to be me, Frick O. Fur. And if you're wondering why Frick Fur, it's because a long time ago when I was like a wee little lad, maybe four years old, I couldn't say my name was Christopher. I said my name was Fukafa. And my dad started calling me Frick. My brother started calling me Frick. Then my friends started calling me Frick. And I kept on growing with me, growing with me. Once I got older, it became my gamer tag. And now it's my YouTube channel. So that is why Frick Fur. Birth date, I think last time we did the early November, which is a good band. If you've never heard of them, go check them out. No, it is not my birthday, so you can't stalk me, but I will do my real birth year, which is 1984. So if it's 2018, I was born in 1984, you math majors can do the math and figure out how old I am. Well, you would think it's 34, but no, my birthday has not happened yet. I am still 33. Um, uh, player name, player info. We got the pilot name. That's all we need. So we're going to go ahead and create. Bam. Look at that. Look at those sweet glasses that he has. Aw, oh, stud. Close. All right. So we've got a company. We've got a pilot, but we do not have the plane yet. So let's go back into FS Passengers and uh, Company Manager is where we want to go. And we want to buy current F plane, which is current flight sim plane. So we got that brand new TBM Cicada for $2.5 million. Holy cow, let's see what other ones they have. So the first opportunity has almost 1,900 hours and it's you know about 1.9 mil. And we can see that it's got a lot of hours. It's got an attractive price though. It's a reasonable choice, but they don't know the former owner. So they don't know if it was well maintained or not. Eh, pretty good, but it's got a lot of hours. Let's see what else there is. For $2.2 million and 900 hours, which is lower than average and a standard price, this is a nice choice. Take into account the former owner is known to maintain his aircraft very well, so there hopefully will not be any surprises. I kind of like that. The next one is 2.1 mil and holy cow, the most of the hours. So this better be the greatest one in the world. But as you can see, it's a bad choice. And the owner, they're uncertain of the maintenance history. Nay, let's scratch it. The bottom one is the cheapest of them with a ton of hours and only 79% of actual state. Well, that doesn't sound good. Uh, be warned, the former owner of the aircraft is not known for maintaining. Ooh, Shot in the gut. So I don't think we're going to go with that. I don't think we're going to go new. I think we're going to take this one right here, which is $2.2 .2 million. It's got a reasonable amount of hours on it. We should be good. So we're going to buy selected aircraft. Ka-ching. Aircraft maintenance, you can see it's not in there because the actual 
actual state of it was 100%, so we should be good. FS passengers, I don't know if I need to select the aircraft or, you know, whatever, but we're going to do that. We're going to select the aircraft. Okay, la load at last position. We're going to see the little loading bar, and then we'll be ready to start our flight. Ah, oh, I just got a new computer, well, a, a little while ago, but I have a solid start, solid state hard drive in here now, which has made startup of the computer so much better, but unfortunately loading time is still not the greatest, but it's better than it could be, I suppose. We're going to hop into our aircraft, we're going to hit shift E, which is going to open our exit, which is the pilot side door, I don't know why that is, because if we look behind us, like, there is a door right here, but I don't know how to open that one. I haven't really looked into it enough, I guess. So they're just going to be crawling over me to get into the plane. So let's go into... Oh, wait, before I do that, I'm also going to load our flight. So if I go to Flight Planner, we're going to load. Hector to Epley. I've already created one, and if you guys want to see what it is, it is not that. So we're going to go ahead and load this. Bam! You can see that we go from a airport KFAR, uh, which is Fargo, North Dakota, my home airport. I know I've flown from it once before, but because there's a lot of changes, we're flying IFR and we're flying a different aircraft. I need some familiarity in my life, otherwise my mind is just going to explode. So, we are flying out of Fargo, North Dakota. Then we're going to go to the first VOR, which is FAR VOR, and then we're going to go to Gopher VOR, and then finally the Omaha VOR, finally to land at Omaha. If you want to see that flight plan, all I've got to do is pull over Sky Vector. You guys all remember Sky Vector? Now, you're used to seeing the world VFR when we were flying VFR flights. Oh, excuse me. But because we're flying IFR, we have two charts that we can look at, the world low and the world high. But... If you saw earlier, our flight level was going to be 250, so that means we're going to be in class alpha above 18,000 feet. We are using world high. So we got Fargo, our KFAR right there. Here's the Fargo VOR, and then we're going to follow this J36 jetway. Now, why is that off? I don't know. We're just going to kind of move it right on because that's what we want is that j36 jet ray which is going to take us to this gopher vor which you can see right there and then we're going to hop on another jetway which is the j21 which is showing up right there and that's going to take us all the way down to the omaha vor and up into epley or omaha airfield now i expect somewhere around here we will be in iowa but i expect that we'll start to get vectors for our final approach into omaha because you know, that's what the game normally does is it doesn't it doesn't do standard approaches very well. It usually just vectors you everywhere. So we're just going to deal with it. We're playing flights. It's a 10 year old game. I mean, well, how much realism can you really ask for? We're trying to do the best with what we've got. So that's going to be our flight plan for right now. Also, you can see I got flightsimdb.com, which is up. It used to be fsxdatabase.com, but that got closed, someone duplicated it, now it's Flight Sim DB, but we got KFAR and Coma, which are the two airports that we're gonna be going to. Now, if you're flying IFR, you also, it's a good practice to file an alternate airfield, but I was looking at the weather, the weather is fantastic today. So it's well above minimums. We are actually to the point where we don't need an alternate, so I'm just not gonna do it right now. I'm not gonna get in all to the creepy stuff of what it's actually required to file IFR, at least not right now. We're just know that we're gonna be doing it. Air nav, I also have this pulled up, which is the real world information. So this is all for simulator. This is real world. The reason I pull this up is it's got like airport diagrams and it's also got the approach plates down here. Uh, this is, well, we're not gonna be approaching uh, Fargo, but we're gonna be approaching uh, Epley, which is down here. And you can see that they have a lot of approaches. We have some stars and some IAPs. But we're not going to be using those. We're going to just basically be getting our vectors into either, you know, ILS, runway, localizer. Uh, it'll probably be ILS for runway 36 based on the weather that I was seeing in the METAR. This is all real world weather. The reason I get that is through Active Sky Next, which is right here. Already pulled up and you can see I was kind of looking around. If we go to KFAR, there's our aircraft. 
I don't want the user aircraft. I want the METAR right here. So you can see, I'm looking at the top part. You can use the decoded version if you want, but the top part says on the 7th at 1553 Zulu, winds are 240 at seven knots, 10 statute miles, visibility, skies clear. Uh, dew point 21, L or temperature 24, altimeter 3039. So that's, you know, it's a really good weather. Let's go check out Coma. At Coma, you can see that on the 7th at 1552, it is winds 350 at 11 knots. So we got a little stronger winds, but they're basically right out of the north. So we'll probably be landing at runway 36. They also have a runway 32. So if they shift while we're in flight, we can maybe expect that. Also 10 statute miles of visibility, few clouds at 1500 feet, dew point 12, temperature 16, altimeter 3050. So also great weather. So I'm just going to move that over to the side and I'm going to minimize this um, and we're going to load our flight plan 250. OK, no, I don't want to move it because if I do move it, it's going to set it to the active runway because that's what was selected when I created the flight plan. So we don't want that to happen. Also, one last thing I want to show you is over here. I have the normal procedures for the Carinado TBM 850. And I'm going to, I think over here, I have it to the before starting checklist. You can see that it's almost like a third down or a fourth down. That's because there's a lot of pre-flight inspection stuff, but we're not going to do that because this is a video game. And so we're just going to simulate that we have done it. Now let's go into FS passengers and start a flight. No parking brake, of course. We're going to throw out these uh, yokes because who likes to fly with yokes? We like to fly with like extra sensory perception, ESP. I think that's what it stands for. And now let's go into FS passengers. Parking brake is on start of flight. There are four passengers who are ready and willing to fly with us. So let's hit okay. As you can see, company is Frick Airlines, payload model, I don't know. I don't know. So it was kind of sc screwy when I started this. Uh, it didn't have the TBM 850, so we kind of had to build it. Hopefully it works out. We'll find out. We have two passengers, as you can see, in the front and the back because we have four sets of seating. I could technically fit five, but I'm never going to do five because the fifth passenger would have to sit in the co-pilot seat, and I am pretending that I actually have a co-pilot. His name is going to, I don't know, we'll think of a cool name later on. Let's add some luggage in here. So let's go ahead and put it in the rear. Even though this says front cargo, I don't know if the TBM 50, or 850 has a front cargo part, but I know in the rear it does have the netting for cargo, so we're just just gonna put it back there. Probably gonna throw off our CG. Holy Hannah, way off! But you know, we'll we'll have to deal with it because it's not properly molded or modeled. With that being said, we'll keep loading. Oh, we're way too high. I should have. There we go. 105 pounds of cargo. What are we taking down there today? Um, We've done kidneys. We've done gummy bears. And today we're doing monster energy drink. Why? Because I'm drinking one right now. And that is the first thing I saw. No, I'm not sponsored by monster or anything like that. I'd have no sponsors. I don't make any money doing this. So, you know, that way you can at least know that I'm being fair and I'm not trying to sell you guys crap. Set type, this is going to be a normal flight. So let's go ahead and set that type. And we are going to do a real time load. Destination, I'm not going to do that because I never took the time to figure out how long it was going to take me to fly there. I'll do that in the future, but not right now. Okay, real time load. I try to keep everything realistic as possible, as you guys know, but we need to take some liberties given that this is a flight simulator. So we have four passengers, takeoff weight, fuel is right there, center of gravity is 0%, so maybe that is pretty good. Never exceed speed is gonna be 266. Uh, we're in flaps extended 135. We'll just make sure to uh, abide by all of that. So let's go ahead and start flight. We're going to move the FS passengers window up here. And while they're getting in, let's start our checklist. So before starting engine, pre-flight inspection is simulated. Completed cabin access door is not closed and locked, nor is the pilot door, nor is the baggage stowed. But we're going to pretend that it all is. Parking brakes are set. Weight and balance are computed and checked. Pilot seat and uh, the other, the right pilot seat uh, adjusted and locking. This is... 
all for real aircraft kind of stuff. Belts and harnesses can't do that. Normal mask micro inverter, about the first thing that is actually something we can do, which is right here. And you can see it's in the norm position. I could lift that up if I wanted to, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna have it in the norm position. This I believe is used for uh, emergency oxygen, but I'm not 100% sure what it's used for. I've never flown this aircraft in real life. And I tried looking into the technical order for the aircraft, which is like 800 pages. And I even searched for micro inverter and I could only find it three times and it never said what it was used for. So if any of you out there know what it's used for, please let me know because I would like to make sure that I am putting out the correct information. But like I said, I do believe it is used for emergency oxygen. Landing gear control, we want to make sure that's in the down position, which it is. Avionics master switch, we're going to go ahead and put that to start, which is up here. I will put down these visors and start. Basically what that's going to do in start mode, it's going to turn on my primary flight display once we turn on power, but it's not going to turn on the MFW, multifunctional display, or... Uh, our multifunctional workstation, MFW, MFD, I think it's MFD. And then uh, the other PFD right here. Radios on adjusted, we can't do that until we get power ignition. That's gotta go to auto or off. So we'll go ahead and put that on auto and starter, make sure that's in the off position. Source, we're gonna go to bat. The reason we don't want this on is because the aircraft would start if I flip that to bat and we don't want that. Authorization for engine starting. We're going to say that that was asked for pilot oxygen switch. We need to go ahead and turn that on and passenger oxygen switch. Make sure that is off. Passenger briefing. We are going to be starting the engine. Everybody just make sure you're seated. Seatbelt sign is coming on. Cast displays. We want to make sure that we uh, shut the doors now. So if I hit shift E, we'll see the door closed and we should see some messages here. The door one disappear. So that is what we are looking for. We can close out those cautions and warnings because the engine is not on. Fuel, we wanna make sure that we check that. And if we look down here, we can see right here that we got 150 in each side. So it is checked. Um, fuel select switch is gonna go to auto. So that is up here, I am still getting used to my easy cam settings that I have selected. So fuel selection switch, that's gonna go to auto. Basically what that's gonna do is down here, there is a fuel selector for left tank or right tank, and that's gonna auto switch between them to maintain balance in the aircraft. Otherwise, if there was starting to be an imbalance because that was not working, we could manually shift that to up here, manual, and then hand crank that to whatever direction we need to go. Exterior lights. Strobe as required. We're not going to go ahead and turn on the, uh, yeah, we'll turn on the strobe. Nav lights, uh, we're going to wait on the strobe. Nav lights are coming on though. And we don't need a flashlight. So now we're going into the starting engine. So ignition switch, well, we already checked all that. Electrical power is still on that. Engine controls off. Uh, so the manual override is right here. We wanna make sure that that is in the off position as well. Uh, basically, uh, that is the manual override for the, I'll talk about that a little later too. Um, power lever idle. This is the power lever. It's not a throttle now, it's a power lever. And I'm sure I'm gonna keep on calling it throttle. This right here is gonna be our propeller governor lever. And that's gonna go to max RPM. And this you would think is mixture control, but in this aircraft, it's actually condition lever. So we're gonna make sure that you, where there's both high idle and low idle. We want it in low idle right now, which is about right there. Actually, it's in the cutoff for this right now flaps we want to make sure it's in up position which it is auxiliary boost pump we want to turn that on and that is right here so now you can hear that running uh propeller area all clear all clear and the next things are a flow in the checklist to basically start the engine so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to gonna hold the brakes down and we're gonna turn the starter to on and we're gonna give us into where we can see the fuel flow going and everything like that everything is starting to kick on pushed it up into low idle right here the mixture or not the mixture the condition lever and that's in low idle beautiful 
it'll warm up and then it'll start to settle down again which you can see right there with the prop perfect engine has been started so we're gonna go ahead and turn our parking brake on again and let's continue going with our checklist there's a lot of things in here. Condition lever is high, I don't know. Engine instruments are all checked. Fuel panel, auxiliary boost pump switch is going into the auto position. Basically, if we lose fuel pressure, it'll kick on now. So instead of manually turning it on or off, it'll do it automatically, which is kind of a nice thing. Then there's a lot of checklist steps on checking the cast messages to make sure that a lot of them are getting extinguished. If we look down here, we see oxygen closed, parking brake is on, bleed off, no, pedo static heat, and starter is on. We need to turn off that starter. Also, we're gonna turn off this oxygen right here, and we're gonna come down here and turn on our bleed air. And you can see that all those went away. Next, what we wanna do is back up here, turn our avionics back on to the on position so you can see everything is now coming on. We'll click that. And our flight plan is already loaded because that is something that happens when you load a flight path in Flight Simulator X. If we did not do it that way, we could manually enter it down here, but that would take a while to do. And that's why I did it through Flight Simulator X. Next, let's go and turn off all these. And let's start getting our ATIS information. So what I'm gonna do is open up this window and I can tune manually to ATIS or I can have the game do it for me. I'm gonna probably have the game do it for me a lot uh, during this flight, but just to show that I know how to do it, if we come down here to the PFD, we could change our comm channel. So it is on 124.5. So we would flip this to 124.5 keep on going the wrong way and then if we throw that into the active by this switch now we'll hear the ATIS ah, I was on the wrong 18. All right, so we're going to tune to Fargo clearance, and this is where we're going to request our IFR clearance. I'm happy that we're going to be taking off on runway 18 because then we're going to be flying south, and we don't have a long taxi ahead of us, so it's just, just going to be fantastic. So let's request our IFR clearance. We'll go ahead and read that back. I'm entering in the transponder right there. You click on this and then you can enter in the number. So 0742. We got to fly runway heading. Uh, if I minimize my checklist on my other screen and pull this up, go to here, we can see our runways and we can see our headings, I believe, are on here. Maybe they're not. Could have sworn that it used to have runway headings. Uh, so we're going to be taking off runway 18. I bet you if I look at this, course heading is 176. So that's going to be a runway heading. So that's what we're going to tune our heading bug to 176. Whoa, too far. 176. Also, they want us to climb and maintain 6,000 feet, so on my altitude select right here, this is all for the autopilot, we're going to go ahead and turn that to 6,000. Next, I'm going to look up and turn our autopilot on, but it's not engaged. We would have to engage it here to have it function. Now, I think we are all ready to go. We can double check with our checklist. 
And next is starting engine with GPU, which we're not going to be doing. Monitoring, we've monitored after starting engine generator. Did I turn the generator on? Good thing we do our checklists. All right. Generator on main. Avionics master switch is on. Autopilot trims master switch is on. Oxygen supply is available. Uh, we can adjust our PFD brightness. We're not going to do any of that. This is this is a video game. VHF, VOR, GPS is all set up. Multifunction display is set up. Autopilot trims. Uh, we could go ahead and check them. Airframe de-ice, we can go ahead and turn that all on as well if we would like. But it is pretty clear out. But down here you can see here's our airframe de-ice. So we can go ahead and turn that on. If there's the switch for light wing, uh, we can turn that on. We can also turn our prop de-ice on if we wanted to. Windshield and then our pedo heats. We're going to turn on our pedo heats, but we're going to keep everything else off. For right now. Also, you can see this one right here, which is inert sep. This is our inertial separator. Basically, when we're taxiing or going through rain or anything like that, uh, or clouds where there could be ice, what that does is if there are particles or um, large debris, so just say we're taxiing and there's a blade bag, a plastic bag going on the taxiway, if our engine were to suck that up, it's going to try to separate it out. It's going to spit it out. So that way it doesn't get into our engine and cause damage. So that's the whole purpose of the inert sep. One thing I want to do is I'm going to pull this and use my trim and I can see my trim wheel here is working. I tried flying this one other time and my trim was set to my elevator. So I tried to trim down and all of a sudden I started nose diving because it thought it was my elevator control. So I just wanted to make sure that was not the case anymore because that was terrible. Next we need our taxi checklist. So taxi lights need to come on and those are right there. Inert sep check on, which it is, passenger briefing, they're briefed, parking brake, release, and then we can go. But before we can do that, we need to talk to taxi or Fargo Ground for our taxi. So we'll quick acknowledge that and then I'll show you how we're going to be taxiing. So we got our airport diagram over here. Stop that. Keep going over. So basically, we are up here. We're going to taxi on Charlie 3 to Charlie, which is right here, over to Bravo, and then up to Bravo 1. So basically, we'll turn out of here, take the first right turn, and we'll be at our hold short location. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize the ATC window, and let's take off our parking brake and start taxiing. Master Caution is on because the inertial set. That's all right with me. Look both ways as we're starting to pull out and make sure there's no one coming. And there he isn't. So let's give ourselves a little bit of power. And we'll start to move. Now you'll see that we're not registering anything on the indicated airspeed, but we do have this lovely right here, ground speed. So we'll use that for maintaining our speed while we uh, taxi. This plane here always looks like it's so close, so I'm going to stay a little to the left of the yellow line right there because I'm so scared that we're going to clip wings, and I don't want that to happen. Also, um, one thing that is nice about this aircraft is it doesn't have a castering front wheel. It actually is uh, attached to the rudder pedal, so when I turn right rudder on, um, it turns. And so look at that nice, smooth turning. Probably should have looked left earlier to make sure there was no aircraft coming, and I didn't. That's why that turn looked a little crappy. We can see we're on Charlie right now. Black on yellow. You're the fellow, or something like that. 
Yellow on black is where you're at. I think that's how I used to say it. And Taxiway Bravo is right here, so we're going to turn right. This thing turns a lot sharper than I'm used to. You can see we have a uh, King Air coming in on final. Oh man, these rudder pedals are way down there. Hurting my feet a little bit. Need to put on shoes. I'm barefoot right now. Flying barefoot. I would not recommend that. That sounds like a terrible idea. Right up here, you can see this nice little road with all this traffic. I have a custom uh, downloaded airport model for a KFAR because it's one I fly out of a lot and I wanted it to look as much like home as possible. So if it looks different from yours, if you're trying to mimic this flight, that's why is I have a custom modeled airport. Turn left and we see that we have an aircraft right there behind or that will be behind, which is okay. Pulling up my checklist as well while we are uh, taxiing, so I'm glad my controls still work. And we won't get too close to this fella. We're gonna stop, it looks like he just got his clearance, so we will start to pull forward and get to the hold short line. You think I would have heard his clearance come over the radio? No, he would have been on with Fargo Tower at that point. So the one that just landed, we got them. Gonna go ahead and there we go. Parking brake is set, condition lever, high idle, propeller governor, we're going to feather that twice, and we'll hear the engine sound change because it's trying to cut through more air because of that, but what that does is it really pushes oil in there to make sure that it's uh, feathering properly for one and for two, that we get that oil flowing. There's once. There's twice. Flaps, we're going to go ahead and set those to take off. DI system as required, and we got that as required. Inertial separator is coming off for takeoff. Uh, we could turn on our pedo heats and everything now too, but we already got our pedo heat on, and all that we show here is parking brake. Next thing I need to do is down here is our oxygen we need to get our cabin pressure up because we're going to be flying at flight level 250 so we're going to start putting our cabin pressure to 8,000 feet which is what we're going to use for our cruise so what you can see is the outside is what the cabin pressure is going to be the inside is the flight level that you can fly to if you have that cabin pressure selected so if we're going to be at 250 actually we need to go to about 6,000 feet because we can't go above uh, to five because that means that we can fly up to 25,000 feet. So we're going to have it at 6,000 for the pressure. Now, actually, I did that wrong. We're going back down. We want to be above. So we're going to have 7,000 feet set. Next, we'll look both ways. Make sure no one's coming. Those lights, I don't know why they were black. We got all our flight controls deflected, free and correct, and all our trims are adjusted. All seatbelt signs are set. Cast, we want to make sure that we check that, and there are no messages except for parking brake. Fuel has been checked, and you can see we're at 149 in both. Flight instruments checked. Um, one thing I'm going to do is if I come down here to my primary flight display, click on this PFD button, you'll see this comes up. I'm going to click on wind and then option two. Now we have our wind. So currently it is pretty much coming right at us at seven knots. So 
one thing I like to do. The other thing is we will quick go back here. No, oh, I don't want that. And then eventually we'll change our CDI. So we were on our heading 176, and that's what we want. So when we turn on our heading mode, that is good. I'm not caring about these VORs right now, but I can go to my CDI button and do GPS. So that way when I go into nav mode, it'll start following our GPS course. Engine instruments check, batteries are charged, parking brake is going to come to the released position. So let's go ahead, contact Far Fargo Tower, and get clearance for takeoff. Fargo Tower, Papa, Hotel, Quebec, 62 at runway 18, ready for takeoff, IFR to Omaha. Papa, Hotel, Quebec, 62, cleared for takeoff, runway 18. Awesome, we are cleared for takeoff. Let's acknowledge that and start pulling forward. <laughs> 